Hello, I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast that self-ignites at 15 degrees. Because this week we watched Attack of the Cybermen. Written by Paula Moore. Directed by Matthew Robinson. And aired in January of 1985. Yeah. So they switch back to one episode a week, but then they switch to 45-minute episodes. So it's sort of like getting two episodes a week anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, also, apparently, Paula Moore is a pseudonym. Um, for? Eric Sayward. And... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hmm, Eric well, that Sayward. might explain all the... Yeah, we'll get there, actually. And Paulo Wolsey and uh, Ian Levine, so... And Ian Levine's a name I haven't (laughs) seen in a while. (laughs) Nice to see that pop up again. Yeah, nice. I mean... Okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. So it starts with... Two random guys just in, in the sewers, and they're like... Hey, there's a wall here that's not supposed to be here. And then one of them's like, we're in the right place, though. See, and he looks at the sign, and the other guy just gets killed behind his back. <laughs> yeah. and then Poor David. <laughs> David was the only innocent one. I mean, he was. <laughs> Except maybe you Perry. Know, even Except Perry. Perry. Even Perry. No. There are some things that she does in this serial. It's just like, uh, I don't know about that, Perry. I don't know about that. So... The doctor is messing around with the chameleon circuit and somehow fixes it. Yeah, he says the chameleon circuit. Five (laughs) hundred something episodes later. And I was like, oh yeah, that's what that's called. And then I was like, he should have used chameleon to fix the chameleon circuits. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, that would have been a more BS reason to sacrifice chameleon. It's like, hey doctor, if I die, the chameleon circuit will get fixed. And he's like, all right. It's just chameleons just sleeping and the doctor's just standing over his bed with, like, a screwdriver. Or, or, uh, or like, chameleons in the shower, like, in Psycho, and the doctor comes in. Somehow I don't think chameleon showers. <laughs> Given the fact that he's metal and electronic. Yeah, you never know. I mean, we never saw him for all of his runs, so you never know. Plus, we don't normally see characters in the shower, so you never know. <laughs> I don't think we've ever seen a character in the shower, actually. <clears throat> yeah, no, I don't think we have. No, well, no, we saw the third Doctor in the shower. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you're right, in his first serial. <laughs> Glad we cleared that up. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a really important serial. Better than it? No. <laughs> no, I really liked the serial, actually. I mean, it kind of sucked, but I still yeah. liked it. I found it entertaining. Yeah. But I don't think it was that good. No. <laughs> anyway, now we cut to uh, Lytton. But I didn't remember he was Lytton until they said Lytton, because I didn't remember what Lytton looked like. Yeah, I remembered it was Lytton, because I knew Lytton was going to show up in this serial. <laughs> so I started off at an advantage thing. <laughs> Um, Anyway, he and three other guys are planning a bank heist. (laughs) Well, (laughs) kind of a change of pace. (laughs) Initially, that's not even what I thought they were doing, because this guy gets out and they're like, see that building over there? Make sure you've got the money. And he gets out and he makes his phone call. And the way he talks on the phone call, I thought he was like an undercover cop. who was he was. Working in Lytton's gang, but that they... We're going to rob, like, some office building. In a, and then later, Litton was like, we're going to rob this bank. And I was like, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> we're rob an office building? <laughs> hey, maybe it's a hedge fund. Although I don't think hedge funds keep their money on site, so I don't know why. Well, I mean, if you if you took the wallet of everyone in, in an office building in, like, London, you'd probably be pretty rich. You'd so. probably make more money than if you actually robbed a bank. I don't know about that. <laughs> No, actually, robbing a bank is, like, one of the worst ways to get money quick. Apparently, the, like, average amount that you pull from a bank heist is pretty low compared to other crimes. I mean, I guess, but it's... I don't know. It's like, what is, what are you going to get into as your first crime, you know? Armed robbery of, like, a single person, and you're going to run around robbing a bunch of people? Or are you going to just go rob the bank? 
I mean, like, you, can get of, into, you can get into counterfeiting, but, like, I don't know, that seems a, a little bit more up there. <laughs> I say, robbing a bunch of individual people makes you less likely to be caught than robbing a bank. <clears throat> well, I mean, as long as you, like, spread them out, as long as you don't, like, rob someone and then ro- run, like, 20 feet to the next person and, <laughs> and rob them. <laughs> okay, anyway. <clears throat> yeah, so they're planning this heist, and um, some of the guys, actually, like, all of them want out. <laughs> <laughs> Litton's like, I'm gonna kill you if you run out. And they're like, guess we're in. Um, so they go to this manhole, I guess. I mean, I thought they just cut a hole in the floor, to be honest. No, I mean, I didn't know because it was like there were like wooden planks, and they 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 took those out, and then there was a passageway to the sewer. Yeah, well, we we cut away from them anyway to these two random dudes on this random in a rock planet. Quarry. Yeah, and they, <laughs> okay. So here's the thing. These guys are like slaves for the Cybermen, obviously. And um I mean not obviously, we hadn't mentioned it yet. So. Okay, well, they are. They're in this like work camp and I actually liked this this rock uh, quarry. Yeah, cuz it it looked all dismal and gray and it actually made you feel like they were they were slave laborers, you know? Their lives kind of just suck like the the gray dismal atmosphere. I mean, the rock quarry was portraying a rock quarry, so... Yeah, but it was also, like, all foggy and and depressing. Like most of England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know about that, so... <laughs> According to my parents, anyway. Well, I, know, I, I mean... I don't know. My parents lived there for, like, two years, so... Oh. I've been <clears> there, like, twice, so... Um... Wasn't anyway. that, it wasn't that foggy and depressing them. And it did. It was like ninety-five degrees and raining. So <laughs> maybe Jim and Martin can corroborate or deny our claims. <laughs> so yeah, but do, these two guys plan an escape. Uh, they had names, but no one really cares. They de- decapitate a Cyberman, and the one guy's like, "Get its head! Get its head! You idiot!" Well, and the they don't head, get its head. Yeah, the head gets shot. Some other random work gets shot. Uh, and then they <laughs> they run away, but there's a Cyberman standing on the ridge with, like, a perfect shot to just kill them. And he just doesn't do anything. It's yeah, just he's the Cyberman there. equivalent of that Dalek who always lets them get away. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you know what? You do your thing, guys. <laughs> Maybe he just knew they'd get gunned down later. Which they do. <laughs> He has, he has the force. He's the one who shoots them later. <laughs> He's like, remember me. <laughs> it's just more like, remember me. Okay, yeah, the Cybermen sounded like Darth Vader in this. <laughs> or at least that one did. It wasn't the Cyber Controller. It was just like this one random was one. Was it the black-handled one? No, no. It was like the Cyber Subordinate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something tells me that wasn't his official name. <laughs> but no, it was just one of the random ones who like sounded kind of like Vader. They all sounded pretty different, so... They sounded pretty cool here, honestly. <clears throat> and I think this is the first time since their initial appearance that I was like, they actually sounded cool. Well, they just sounded like the, um... What was the lost Cyberman seal we had? Earthshock. It sounded like the Earthshock Cyberman, but more robotized. Ro- robot? Well, these are the Telos Cybermen, so it makes sense that they would have a, <clears throat> a different accent, you know? Well, they should just sound like the tomb from the Cybermen, Cybermen. It's the tomb, the tomb of the Cybermen. If you remember that serial way back in the day? <laughs> the tomb of the Cybermen is on Telos, so. <clears throat> oh, so that's where we. Yeah, saw that's before. where we know Telos from. Yeah, they brought back a bunch of stuff you probably wouldn't remember. Yeah, in this serial, <laughs> the serial's like Cyberman history galore. <clears throat> Anyway. And, and they throw Litton in without bothering to explain where he's from. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like you could have forgotten Litton at this point, honestly. He wasn't that big of a part of what was the last Dalek serial, whatever it was. Resurrection. Yeah, Resurrection. Yeah, well, honestly, I don't even know why they bothered to include Litton. It could have been literally anyone else. The only reason I can see that they included him was for that scene later where the doctor was like, I misjudged Litton. You mean that final five seconds of the, the yeah. serial? 
that didn't have anything to do it's with not anything. not even the final five seconds. It's like five seconds before the final five seconds because the final five seconds are the base blowing up and the doctor going, well, that didn't work out very well. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so anyway, the doctor and Perry materialize in Totter's Lane. So also another weird throwback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Also kind of would have worked better for season season, <laughs> season 20. 20. <laughs> All serial would have worked better for season 20. <clears throat> um, so the, the, now that the chameleon circuit is working, or, or is supposed to be working, is, is functioning, let's just say that. <laughs> um, yeah, it turns, uh, it turns it into, like, what, some kind of... Vanity or wardrobe. Yeah. I, yeah. Or a cupboard. <laughs> Might just be a cupboard. And then they walk out and Perry's like, wow, conspicuous. And the doctor's like, Except it is conspicuous. I don't know why I said it so sarcastically. And the doctor's like, yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, well, she hasn't done it in a long time. Like, 500 years, probably, but... Also, Perry is continuing the trend she started last week, I guess, of wearing literally the worst outfit she could possibly find. She's wearing, like, hot pink this week. Yeah. I think it was a dress. <clears throat> no, it wasn't. <clears throat> She's wearing shorts. Looks stupid as heck. Yeah, well, honestly, my faith in the costume department is drastically they dropped. No, okay, they switch her costume later, and it's like somehow even worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this serial and the last serial made my faith in the costume department for Perry and the Doctor specifically drop like seventy notches. <clears throat> seventy notches. Yeah, on the scale I just made up from zero to a hundred. All right. N- notches. Okay. So they come out and they're like, man, we've got to track this distress beacon. And the doctor's like, this alien's going to be so grateful that I can get him off this planet. It's going to be so great. Man, Perry, look at us go. We're going to be great. We're going to save the day. Perry's like, what if it's a trap? <laughs> the doctor's like, yeah, uh... Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He just kind of brushes it off. Yeah, so they okay. So they track the signal to this house. They get there. Then they're like, yeah, we should probably use the TARDIS to track the signal. So they go back to the TARDIS. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of dumb. To the TARDIS and the doctor's like, man, let's track the signal now. And they make up some nonsense explanation as to why they did that. And was like, oh, the signal's coming from multiple places and it's being bounced off that house. So to track it, we need to use the TARDIS. Yeah, honestly, there's a bunch of incomprehensible <laughs> BS in this serial. And this isn't even the worst of it. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. I kind of liked all the incomprehensible BS. It wasn't that good. It was kind of funny how it was like... <clears throat> It's funny know. how far the show has fallen. <clears throat> no, it's just funny how <laughs> complicated they're trying to make everything. Well, they're trying to fill the the 45 minute time slot, which they've never done before, so Yeah, they've never had any four episode serial that wasn't either rushed or padded Drawn out. <laughs> Okay, that might not be true, but it's. Cl- I mean, there are only a few. I I, I think that actually felt well, per- perfectly paced. Yeah, well, when you compress it into two forty-five minutes uh, episodes, you can really tell where all the the like incomprehensible nonsense is added to pad the runtime. Because yeah, no, well, I mean, in, in in the in the regular, you know. 25 minute episodes let's be honest it's only like 19 minutes of of actual stories you have the intro the outro and the stupid recap that sometimes goes on for like three and a half minutes yeah well percentage wise that's like that's like a small percentage but then you get to 45 minute episodes and like a solid 25 to 30 percent is just padding not 25 to 30 percent. I wouldn't go that far. Maybe I like would. like 10 to 15. <laughs> I would go 25. Anyway, <clears throat> um, for some reason, the doctor and Perry decide to head down into the sewers. <laughs> Having the doctor detects that the signal's coming. From- <laughs> yeah, no need their TARDIS now. So, uh, <laughs> um, the TARDIS turns into an organ. 
so there were actually these scenes yeah it turns into yeah they actually they materialized near the entrance to the sewers that Lytton and co went down and there were these scenes where Lytton and everyone were being tailed by these cops so it was like haha maybe they're the the clone robot cops from resurrection and then it turns out they were so that was kind of interesting i guess um so the doctor and perry actually confront some i I guess it's the same pair of cops yeah the doctor like pushes one down the uh, manhole beats him up presumably i guess maybe he just kills him maybe he just straight up no the doctor comes up is like he's taking a nap yeah, maybe he's taking his final rest. <laughs> I, think he's, I think he's just asleep. Um, <laughs> Even though this doctor's pretty bloodthirsty later. <clears throat> maybe the talons of Wang Chiang rat appears and eats his face. <laughs> and maybe he's still alive after all these years. I mean, this serial is pretty violent. Surviving and growing honest. in the sewers. Yeah, it is really violent. <clears throat> it is actually one of the most violent Doctor Who serials, I think. Uh, and I think it was heavily criticized for that. I think it was whole season's heavily criticized for that, actually. <laughs> but the serial was, like, one of four total that gets an M rating in Australia. Yeah, well... Uh, I think Towns of Wayne Chiang was actually one of the other ones. <clears throat> yeah, well, Australia is just... Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. I always hear Australia is, like, really strict about TV and movie ratings. I always hear Australia uh, kind of sucks if you want to buy video games because there's a massive tax on them. Well, I always <laughs> just hear Australia kind of sucks if you want to buy electronics of any kind. <laughs> what is Australia good for? Beaches. I've heard they've had nice. I've heard they have nice beaches. <clears throat> they have like a Mediterranean climate, I think, or like kind of the same climate as as we do. They also got that giant, you know, desert section where everything tries to kill you. I've heard. So. Uh, anyway, that's Australia for you. <clears throat> yep, that's all you need to know about Australia. <laughs> you can visit there now safely assured that uh, we're clearly the experts on Australia. So the doctor and... Okay, okay so they they handcuff... They, they, they leave one of the clones I, they were clones right or they robots Something like that. i don't know they leave one of the cops not knocked out and they handcuff him to something and i don't know if you noticed but there was a wheelbarrow full of bricks like within arm's reach so it was like as soon as you leave he's probably just gonna smash his way out of the handcuffs <laughs> well it wasn't a very thought out plan to be honest <laughs> yeah neither is there neither is there let's hold what's his face at gunpoint plan a bit later <laughs> Because they're in the sewers, and we didn't mention, but um, one of the heist guys gets shot by a Cyberman. Yeah, Payne. Yeah, Payne tries to kill a Cyberman and dies. So Lytton and the other three guys just kind of leave him there. Cyberman are also pretty weak in this serial, because later someone just, like, shoots one, and he starts bleeding this green... Yeah, that was Lytton. That was right at the end. Just starts spraying uh... all this green blood everywhere. A used hey, to be continuing imp- that green goo trend that started, I don't know Season when. Season 19? Yeah. Well, later on, <laughs> undercover cop dude, I wanted to call him Duggan for a second, um, <laughs> shoots a Cyberman. Should have been Duggan, actually. <laughs> point blank in the face when he's in the TARDIS, and the Cyberman's just like, ah, and well, dies. I mean, the doctor pretty much does the same thing. <laughs> The Cybermen used to be impenetrable to bullets because they're made of metal, so... Maybe they were just... Maybe all the guns in the serial were loaded with golden bullets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> you never know. Gold would actually make a pretty poor bullet, to be honest, because it's so soft. Yeah, but I mean, the Cybermen can't get within, like, ten feet of it, <laughs> so... <clears throat> oh, man, I liked when they had the the, the uh, entire room full of explosives later, and they're supposed to be creating this big explosion, but it was all these, like, tiny mini explosions, and you could tell they just didn't have the budget for it. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Oh, man. <clears throat> anyway, um, <laughs> one of the guys, um, what was his name? You just said it, but I... Pain? No. The, the cop. undercover cop? Yeah. Dude, I said I wanted to call him Duggan. Oh. You didn't say his actual name? No. We had his actual name, so anyway. It's on the one, death count somewhere. Yeah, one of, the, one, of the, 
one of the guys working for Lytton is an undercover cop. Um, and he meets up with the doctor and Perry, and he's like, "What are you guys doing here? Where'd you get that gun?" Because they're holding Perry. Yeah, they told gun. him at gunpoint. And then the doc. Okay, so <laughs> Perry Perry is the one with the gun, and I don't know. It's kind of weird because the the doctor. I guess this isn't weird for the sixth doctor. <laughs> also, we didn't mention at the beginning of the serial. The doctor's like, he tells Perry not to be scared, and he's like, "I won't hurt, I won't hurt you, Perry. I would never try to hurt you." And I was like, "Hmm, hmm." Yeah, and then he berates Perry later in the serial, and I'm like, "Man, if I was Perry, I'd be gone like 20 serials ago." <laughs> yeah, same here. But um, yeah, so Perry's the one holding him at gunpoint, and the doctor's like, "Yeah, shoot him, Perry." And she, and <laughs> the, the, the most messed up thing is she doesn't really hesitate. Tate, she kind of just she kind of does, but well, she goes looks you, like she, you sure? No, she 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 moves forward like she's about to do it. And I was like, <laughs> okay, who needs character? Who needs consistent character in this show? <laughs> who needs consistent character when you just throw it all out the window. <clears throat> and then Penny's apparently like, not Lytton. I mean. <laughs> I don't know why they brought back Lytton and tried to make him a hero. Like, what was what was up with that? And plus, they did it in such a poor way. Anyway, it was like the last five minutes of the serial where they brought him back. Like, oh, Lytton was trying to save everyone. And you're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever, Lytton. <laughs> yeah, sure, Why, why don't Lytton. you just die? Lytton? Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> he pulls a chameleon and begs the doctor to kill him. Oh, I thought you—I thought you were going to say he doesn't show up for six weeks, and then when he does, he dies. <laughs> also true. Um, so the doctor and Perry—I uh, don't know—they, them, and the undercover cop like figure some stuff out. <laughs> they like realize they want the same goal of taking down Lytton. The cop's like, you know, we could have arrested Lytton a while ago, but we wanted to see what Lytton was doing. Yeah. You know, like what? <laughs> Yeah, they give Lytton this whole little story about how they could have just brought him in whenever they wanted, but for some reason they decided to... I don't know. This was just so... Dumb. Dumb. It was just a dumb plan. There's just no two ways about it. It's just a bad plan on their part. Well, speaking of bad plans, the two escaped prisoners on Telos <laughs> kill a Cyberman, and they're like... <laughs> the one guy says to the other guy, all right, you're going to disguise as a Cyberman. He's like, this yeah, is never going to work. He's like, yeah, this, just put this head on. Bonk, puts the head on. He does kind of look like a Cyberman, <clears throat> really hunched Cyberman. Because um, their plan is that they're going to disguise themselves as Cyberman and prisoner and try to get into cyber control so they can fly their way. Out so of they there. can get the time ship that crashed there. That was their yeah. ship, I think. Oh, it was theirs? See, there was so because much that's confusing how they, that's nonsense how they know like in that episode they need two. Three people to pilot the ship, I guess. Oh uh, yeah, I guess that would make sense. <clears throat> I don't know how they plan to pilot the ship though, because they're just like, man, that third person got killed, but screw it, we're just gonna just break into cyber control anyway. We can. I mean, it's better than going back. Pretty much, don't have any other option. Go back and free all the other prisoners. Easy peasy. I mean, especially how easily that Cyberman just got decapitated by that rock. Man, these Cybermen are really flimsy in the serial. Yeah, they're the Telos Cybermen. They aren't cold, hardened warriors like the Mondas Cybermen. Okay, so... Well, we actually, we don't get that Mondas plot yet. That was just... I didn't understand it. I I still don't understand it. Well, but anyway. Tenth Planet... Well, we, 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 can, we can explain okay. it when we get we'll there. Do, okay. <laughs> I mean, I kind of get it, but it was so stupid and... <laughs> And I mean, non- yes. And nonsense yes. I was just like, what is even happening? All right, so, anyway. I still liked it, though. I liked how stupid and nonsense it was. But anyway. Yeah, the serial has gotten... We've gotten to the point in the show where series are so bad, they're good. <clears throat> you know, there's no, that, I don't that even, critical no, see, point. No, see, most of the time, I would be like, you know what? This is so bad that it's good. And then it's so good that it loops around back <laughs> to being bad again. But, you know, <laughs> this serial... I was like, you know what? This is incomprehensible and also like just weird and probably not that great. But you know no, what? I still terrible. like it. No, no I don't. No, see, I don't think it's, it's own, terrible. It's only redeeming qualities that it's entertaining. No, it's not. It has so much going on here. There are all these confusing plot lines, and it just makes it great. No. <laughs> I mean, in my <laughs> opinion. 
the plot points weren't that great. It's all time travel-y, which is kind of <laughs> cool. Not really. It does. It does. Barely. The Cybermen, we'll explain it when we get there. <clears throat> anyway, um, Litton has brought um, one of the dudes into the cyber control thing that they've set up in the sewers of London. Yeah, and they're like, we want to serve you in this Iron Man. They're like, wow, okay, thanks. And then they're like, hey, look, the doctor's here. And they're like, we're going to steal his TARDIS. So they go steal his TARDIS. And the doctor's like, shoot, we got to go make sure the TARDIS is locked. Apparently the doctor didn't, like, lock the door to the TARDIS when he left or something. <clears throat> also, the Cybermen figure out that his TARDIS is disguised as an organ, which is impressive since they've only ever seen it as a police box. Yeah, also Lytton recognizes the doctor. Yeah. Well, I guess you can just explain that one by he explained his regeneration off screen, which is kind of a, a BS explanation, to be honest. But, you know, it works. It works. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's how episode oh, one ends. We didn't mention Lytton's theme. Uh, Lytton's the best part of this serial. God, the music in this serial was a train wreck. I was going to say a mistake, but yeah. <laughs> It was okay. <clears throat> there was a there was a cool bit where <clears throat> the doctor like plays um you know that da na na on the organ tortoise and then like for the next three minutes of the serial the music for the serial is like variations of that music that that thing. Yeah, but for the rest of the serial it's variations of that little tune that plays whenever Litton shows up. <laughs> And honestly, it was the most <clears throat> cartoon comical jingle that you could possibly imagine. I don't even remember how it goes at this point. <laughs> but, do I. but but if if I've convinced Dylan to do so in editing, you already heard it at the beginning of this episode. So yeah, sure. <laughs> um, and that's honestly that's that's something else I liked about this serial. It, it was just well, episode one at least. <laughs> It was it's it was so cartoonish and like I don't know if you noticed but the 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 gestures and the actions were so exaggerated and like there's this one scene I specifically remember where the doctor like spins one eighty and points and Perry just like leans back and get, um to 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 dodge his his extended arm so that was I don't know it was just and she's wearing that bright pink and I don't know just seemed like very cartoony which I kind of liked. Oh, we forgot to mention um, Perry's accent is, like, kind of better-ish. It's getting better the more she does it. Yeah. Maybe, well, I mean, maybe I by the had, time like, she leaves, it'll actually be possible. <laughs> so, yeah, well, episode two begins them landing on Telos and then, like, explaining, they're explaining this whole nonsense plot they have. Well, okay, so the Doctor gets, they get split up because they, the TARDIS gets, like, thrown off course. Um... And they get split up because a rogue Cyberman just shows... There's this whole plot, too, that just gets thrown away with some of the Cybermen that they're waking up and, like, going rogue and killing all the other Cybermen. <laughs> so that plot shows up just to give the Doctor and Perry a reason to escape and then never gets brought up again. <clears throat> I thought it was going to be revealed that the Cryons were making them go insane, but nope, we don't even get that, so... Maybe it was the cold temperature, I don't know. So, so yeah, they kind of explain what's going on. The Cybermen of Telos want to... They, they've come well, into okay. possession of the time travel machine thing. Yeah, and, but they can't control it. And what they want to do is go back in time, which is actually forward in time, and stop Mondas. I thought it was back from, in time. Well, because they're only in 1985 right now. 1985... On Earth, yeah, though. They yeah. go forward in time to get to Telos. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I see, they want to go see. Yeah, back, because, which is also forward because Mondas is going to just Because Mondas gets destroyed up. in 1986 in the 10th planet. Yeah. Um, and this is in 1985. On Earth. But future Telos, like way in the future Telos. Or maybe it's like the same time. <clears throat> I think it's in the future. I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> But because I think it's in the future because when Mondas gets blown up, that's the reason why they took over Telos. Like they mentioned that the, they went yeah, it and is. attacked it is. Telos because Mondas yeah. blew up and they needed the refrigeration units that the Cryons built. Which on I guess Telos. is I guess is also a callback to Tomb of the Cybermen. Yeah. God, <clears throat> who wrote this? 
trash. Paula Moore. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's actually it's actually kind of clever, honestly. Yeah, I like I liked how it was complex just expl- it, was. it was. Just explained really poorly is the thing. Which is all right. I you know, I kind of like when it sort of makes you headcanon your way into it. Sort of makes you think a little bit, but I don't know. I I, I did like it. I like it because I like. It makes I like it because it makes more sense than the Dalek timeline, which is just no, it doesn't nonsense at this point. <clears throat> okay, yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. Their plan seems like kind of paradoxical, but you know, maybe not. But I think cryons- that's what the doctor says. They're not allowed to change the blowing up Mondas because it would like destroy the web of time or whatever nonsense. Because well, it would lead to them like not going yeah, back in exactly. time to blow would- up Mondas. Yeah. <laughs> which means Mondas would blow up. Yeah. Which means that they would go... Okay. <laughs> You're not allowed to contravene the laws of time or some nonsense. That's how Doctor Who just explains away these paradoxes. Like, oh, laws of time. Laws of time. So, yeah, the Cryons are some of the most nightmare-inducing <laughs> creatures on Doctor Who. Honestly, just the way they speak and their faces and there's hand gestures, it's just like... They look ugh. like um, jellyfish on land, though. They look like jellyfish with what? legs. No, they don't. <clears throat> it to me. And those eye holes. I thought the eye holes were supposed to be, like, those are the eyes of the cryons, but then when the camera zooms in close, you can see the actor's eyes behind the face. Yeah, they look creepy as heck. <laughs> And I was like, uh... It almost looked like they were glinting at times, like, no. So... They're just exceedingly, uh... Terrifying. So I'll add that on my list of Doctor Who creatures that I don't want to meet in a dark alley. Which is, like, most of them. Is the one you would like to meet in a dark alley? (laughs) Uh, I don't know. I'll have to think about that one. So... <clears throat> yeah, well, Perry gets ca- freed by the Cryons, and the Doctor gets thrown in jail by the Cyberman with a Cryon, so that's, you know, pretty convenient for the next five <laughs> minutes of plot exposition dump. <laughs> it's also pretty convenient that they both bring to the table elements of the plan that they need to execute the plan that they create. I don't know, because the Doctor has a sonic lance now. Yeah. Well, at least it's only in this serial, I think. Yeah, because he, I mean, he gets he destroyed. Leaves, he leaves it gets behind. destroyed, but maybe he has another one, or I don't know. Maybe he'll somehow he bring makes it back. More. He got a box of them in the tiny <laughs> stuff, and so that's like, well, good thing I got this box of them. He uses it to kill a Cyberman earlier too. We didn't mention that, but he stabs a Cyberman with it. <clears throat> yeah. In the I mean, sewers. So, in the base. The Cryons reveal they're working with Lytton. Reveal that Lytton's a good guy. Some nonsense. Well, quote-unquote good, because, I mean, I don't know, the Cryons aren't that upstanding of a people themselves. I don't know. It was supposed to be, like, a big surprise that the Cryons are still alive because they all thought that they were all dead. Yeah, except they only mentioned the, that the Cryons were all dead, like, three minutes before they showed up, so yeah. it's like, hmm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they all get killed off after this. I guess Tomb of the Cybermen... Well, maybe some of them live. <clears throat> well, my assumption was Tomb of the Cybermen takes place after this, so the Cybermen well, just yeah, that would kill make off sense. all the cryons and then bury themselves in the tombs. Maybe some of them still... It's Tomb of the Cybermen is only within, like, a 20-foot... It only takes place in, like, a 20-foot circle, honestly. But don't they, mention, that one don't they mention in Tomb thing. of the Cybermen that the planet is uninhabited? Yeah, well, maybe that's as far as they know. I don't know. You, you're implying this this st- what, they this still don't know if the cryons are alive or not. Yeah, see, this is what happens when you try and take all of these other serials and... When you try retcon a bunch of... No, see, that, that's what they're trying not to do. They're trying not to retcon anything, and this is what they ended up with. No, I think and they were trying no, to retcon No, I don't retcon think it retcons them. anything. This no, doesn't retcon to, anything. They were trying to retcon them into being connected. Like, originally you were just like, oh, okay, like, Mondas gets destroyed, and at some point they're, like, in this tomb. But now they, like, try to explain well, how they really went from retcon. Mondas to tomb. It's just sort of they're trying to connect 10th <clears throat> Planet and Tomb of the Cybermen, which they do successfully without changing any of the prior events, so it's not really a retcon. Luckily, luckily every other Cyberman story just takes place in the distant future after Tomb of the Cybermen, <laughs> so... Wow. Lazy. I mean, it's true... 
Except for Earthshock. Earthshock's just... Earthshock's just there. <clears throat> so... Wow. Yeah, well... Litton and the one remaining member of his bank robbing crew go out to go steal the time ship thing and they meet up with the two prisoners who've been like running around on the planet for two episodes yeah they're like hey let's team up and they're like okay <laughs> Litton's like you need three people to pilot that ship and like how do you know that and like the cryons told us and they're like what <clears throat> So they go into cyber control to get the ship, and uh, Litton's like, I'll cover you guys. And then he gets captured by the Cyberman, and the three guys, they, like, open the door to the time ship and immediately just get gunned down by the Cyberman. Well, okay, so here's the thing. The first guy, which was, like, the, the gung-ho guy who who wanted the other dude to um, to wear the Cyberman helmet, he just, like, touches the door and gets shocked. Yeah. And dies. And I guess that opens the door. So the other two are like, hmm, okay, whatever. And so they go in and they just get shot by a Cyberman. Yeah. So meanwhile. Honestly, I really liked it. I like just how. Just, it just, was out of no. Honestly, yeah. I was like, I was like kind of half paying attention to the episode. And then all of a sudden, just like, like I Honestly, I liked how just out of nowhere it was. They just opened the door and just. And they're dead. And, and that's it. They're just dead. Um, so meanwhile, the doctor is talking to, um, what's her face? Uh, n- n- something. Well, hell, I don't know. It was, sorry, it wasn't hell. What? I don't know. Uh, not Litton. No. Uh, no, oh, he's talking with Flast. Yeah, Flast. <clears throat> Freaking flast. Okay, so they've locked flast in this uh, cryo to- room. Yeah, to keep you alive. Yeah, because the cryons can't survive in temperatures above zero degrees. So they have this mineral or substance or whatever it is that also can't survive above like 10, 10 degrees because it'll blow up if it does and at 15 degrees it self ignites but as long as it's cold it's fine so they lock her in this room full of explosives and all she has I mean I don't know why she hasn't thought of this plan <clears throat> before because I guess she couldn't open the door without the sonic lance I don't really know because like all the other crap in this serial was just kind of out of the blue but yeah, what she and the doctor come up with is they're going to take the 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 substance and just push it out the door, and it'll blow up and kill the guard. And it works. <laughs> yeah, well, they're also really... And then Wicked Flash but- sacrifices herself by using <laughs> the sonic lance to blow everything to smithereens. They're really inconsistent about how much of that chemical you need to blow stuff up because the doctor takes a spoon and just picks some up and she's like, you have enough there to blow off your hand. And they're like, how much do we need to blow up the side man? She's like, oh, just like a spoonful. And I'm like, what? No, she says very little and he, he dumps most of it back. Anyway. Uh, but, then, but then it was like the entire horde of the stuff blowing up and you could tell they're just like little mini explosions like oh, I didn't have the budget for it. But that's okay. Yeah, well. Meanwhile, the other cryons want to kill Perry, and they don't, and they do, and they don't again. I don't know. And there were this is, I thought this was where it was revealed, like maybe more in depth that they're working with Linton. I was just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, well, Perry figures it out because know. they put a picture of the doctor on the screen. She's like, how did you know that was the doctor? We came here with two other people, and she's like, you knew Linton, didn't you? And they're like, damn it, they figured us out. Why yeah, are we so dumb? A, this is such a stupid way to reveal. <laughs> It like honestly, only the person writing this would think of that method of no, I'm figuring pretty, I'm out. I'm pretty that sure though there was a scene before that with there was there was the scene before that with Litton and the dude because the guy was like, I don't want to help you, and then they just give him a bag of diamonds, and he's like, oh, and Litton's all like, yeah, diamonds are common on Telos. Yeah, no, what I'm saying is that's <laughs> such a stupid way for Perry to figure out that that they already knew who the doctor was and that they're working with Litton. I was like, who would think of that method of of, you know, deducing it. Nobody. Paula Moore. <laughs> except, yeah. This, ex- this mythical poor Paula Moore person. <clears throat> so anyway, I don't know, there's some more death. The Cybermen are like, 
mind controlling Litten. Honestly, it was just it was so dumb how they brought Litten back and tried to make him a hero because he was because <laughs> no he he was such a an evil guy in his first appearance. Yeah, and I guess it, I guess it kind of makes it cool and interesting how he was more of a hero here or was supposed they're to, to be they're trying to make him like a mercenary type character he works for whoever pays the most like the Daleks is working for the Daleks because one that's a good way to not get yourself killed and two <laughs> they uh are paying him I guess yeah probably the diamonds <clears throat> these diamonds seem to be common everywhere that's not earth <clears throat> they're actually pretty common on earth too fun fact <clears throat> um relatively so anyway uh yeah the doctor like escapes makes it to, he finds the rest of the crowns like Litton's working with us well perry's like Litton's working with the crayon <laughs> the doctor's like what i misjudged that man then they, like one of the crayons dies they get the tardis back materializes as a police box again so i think the comedian circuit's just immediately <laughs> broken again <clears throat> yeah, you mat- they materialize in like cyber command center oh we didn't mention the cyber controller is in this and the cyber subordinate, like you <laughs> called him. Yeah, the black handled one. They've all got. Oh, d- we did mention well, the cyber controller and cyber subordinate, I guess is what we're calling them now, are in this. I well, thought we discussed that off recording for no, some we reason. We did? No, yeah. I thought. No. no, we didn't mention what? it. On. I don't think we mentioned Cause it. Because on... you said cyber subordinate, and I was like, I don't think that's what he's called. Oh, well, maybe that I don't was know. on recording. I Whatever. Don't know. <clears throat> Man, the serial is so convoluted it's, and confusing. It's, it's confusing a podcast yeah. recording of it. It's confusingness <clears throat> is seeping into real life. Um, yeah, I'm pretty the sure the, Witten. the black. Okay, wait. I'm pretty sure the black handled <laughs> Cyberman has like an actual title. I don't care. I like Cyber Subordinate. <laughs> have Upstart d- Cyberman. No. I have dumb titles. <clears throat> um, yeah, the Doctor like takes a gun and. Well, okay, so Litton stabs the cyber controller, and then the doctor, like, guns down the cyber controller, and he's two cyber lackeys. <laughs> and then Litton dies, because Litton... cyber been... guns down the cyber lackeys with their cyber guns. <laughs> and he's cyber... Yeah, we've got the best his cyber cybers is way, I don't know. We've got cyber Litton, cyber gunning down the cyber men. <laughs> the doctor cyber gets into his cyber TARDIS, <laughs> and cyber dematerializes. <laughs> then the cyber control cyber blows up. Cyber. <laughs> cyber. Cyber. <laughs> <sighs> and, uh, yeah, so the Doctor kills three more Cybermen, which are the two Cybermen and the Cyber Control, and he leaves, and yeah, it he blows gets, up. Honestly, this serial ended so, so abruptly. He just gets <laughs> in the part and he's like, wow, I guess Litton wasn't a bad guy after all, and then the, everything explodes, and it ends. <laughs> I mean, and when you think about it, you're like, wow, yeah, I guess that actually did resolve everything. Uh. Mainly because everyone's dead now. Uh. So the Cyberman plot to go back in time and, I don't know, was foiled again. Okay, honestly, maybe this deal's not as bad as I'm making it out to it's be. It's not. It's really not. But the pl- it's pretty the good. Plot, the plot itself was terrible. No, I thought it was pretty good. It's like horribly it was, convoluted, and there's just, just a bunch of random like subplots that never get resolved. It's actually not that convoluted. <clears throat> they just ex- go about describing it in like the most asinine way they possibly could. And that makes it pretty bad, to be honest. Makes it good to me. I like confusing <clears throat> BS. Well, the bad part is just they have all these subplots that they throw in and then just, like, oh, see, I like resolve that. in the most, like, not res- resolution what, way by possible. by having everything explode? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was really referring to, like, the two... Well, there's this... When you first meet the two guys on the planet, you're like, why do I care about oh, these okay, people? Okay, so the thing... No, the thing with them was I thought there was going to be some, like, secret mechanism in the Cyberman head unit or whatever they needed for some reason but no yeah. apparently they just wanted no. to disguise themselves <clears throat> honestly I don't even know why that subplot was included I feel like a seal is better without that subplot just cut that subplot you don't need those two prisoners <laughs> you don't want to see a person putting on a cyberman head I do no and I'm glad that it happened well those scenes were always the worst parts of episode one though like every time it cut to them I was like oh god no, honestly, because all I they f- did was like argue and bicker and no I kind of like I, well, I liked how the one guy was like super uh, negative, and the other guy was just like a 
D-bag to him. But the thing is, like, yeah, those scenes are definitely padding, but... Um, <clears throat> Oh, okay, I forgot what I was going to say about that, but whatever. Uh, there was something else I wanted to say about the seal. Yeah, Six Doc is pretty entertaining. Doesn't mean I really <laughs> like him that much, though. <clears throat> I like elements of his character, like I said last week, but I, I think I just don't like him the way he treats Perry, to be honest. Honestly, I kind of just want Perry to leave. <clears throat> yeah, him and Perry just honestly don't really work that well together. <clears throat> I mean, especially since she said, like, a couple times already, like, hey, I'm going to leave, or like, hey, I really don't like this, so I'm going to leave. So like, I kind of just wanted to leave. Perry worked pretty well with the fifth Doctor, and she was like a... She she looked like she was going to be an interesting character, and then we got the sixth Doctor, and there was a whole wrench in the works, and it's just... No, nah, honestly, <clears> she didn't even seem like she's going to be an interesting... Like, Planet of Fire, really? Nah. Well, it seemed like they could take her in an interesting direction, um, but they didn't, yeah, so... I mean, well, I already know. It didn't really even seem like they could take her in an interesting direction. She was kind of just, <clears throat> I don't know. But I already know kind of when she leaves. So I don't, so. So I won't say anything <clears throat> then. Yeah, honestly, I mean, her, her and the six doctors just don't I don't work know exactly off. when, but I do know something about... Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. I can spoil uh, it right now if you yeah, want. Yeah, no, don't. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Because I know inevitably I'll just accidentally spoil it for myself soon anyway. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I don't know. The serial... Meh. That was meh. Entertaining, I, but no, not I like liked, it. I liked it. <clears throat> but did you, I thought it was solid. I don't think it was that good, though. I think it was entertaining, but I don't think it was good. No, I think it was pretty good. No, I think it was like Twin Dilemma goodness. <clears throat> no, I think it was, it was better than that. And honestly, I, I like railed into this serial so hard for the past, I mean, for, for this episode, I was like, it's BS, it sucks, but like, at the end of the day, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> Logic checks out to me. <laughs> well, anyway, email us at thedoctordecadavegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, anchorants, love letters... Your thoughts on the new heightened violence in this season. <laughs> Forgot to mention the scene where Lytton gets tortured by the Cybermen. They just like crush his hands and they start oh, yeah. bleeding. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you can find us on iTunes, YouTube, and Google Play, all at Trust Your Doctor. Leave a rating if you like the show. Check us out on Facebook, Trust Your Doctor. Like us on Facebook. Also check us out on Twitter at TUID Podcast and follow us on Twitter. And next week we watch. Vengeance on Theros or Veros or however you want to say it. But until then, the end. <laughs>